It is officially spring, and of course, that means it is time for the zoo to reopen. This week, Friday, John Ball Zoo is set to open for the 2023 season. Joining me now with more on what we can expect this year, COO John Ball Zoo, Andy McIntyre. We're so glad you're here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I re really appreciate it. I mean, it's such a great time of year. It's always really exciting when the zoo opens, and especially this year, you have a lot of new things. Oh, we've been uh, hard at work and still are for a lot of amazing things that are going to be happening this year at the zoo. What kinds of new animals can we expect to see? Uh, so a couple things, you know, those who have come in the last two years have seen us uh, continue to um, construct our pygmy hippo pavilion habitat, which will have pygmy hippos, Sidatunga and white stork, all Western African animals. That will open uh, to the public after Memorial Day. Uh, so people will start to see the, the where how far we've come with that as they enter the zoo this season. There's also two new ambassador animals that people will see. Uh, when they go up to the space that housed our koala the last year, uh, we will have a two-toed sloth uh, named Twig and two uh, white-nosed kawadis, um, also known as quadamundis, um, named Cusco and Durango. That's really exciting. Tell me about the pygmy hippos and why it is such a big deal that they're here. Um, so we've been working hard along with our other AZA uh, institutions, accredited institutions, to work to support this species population. It's um, extremely endangered. It's found only in Western African countries and their population has been on the decline. And so it's important that we bring awareness to those species um, that need that uh, conservation work. And also it is an amazing connection that our guests can have with wildlife here at the zoo. The habitat we've created is also one that is going for the highest levels of green building certification. So you're going to see and understand how we're using solar power, how we're reusing materials, diverting it from the landfill, and then also doing um, a zero water habitat. So the water that we get here on site is collected and managed in a way that we've designed it so the facility can reuse that water. That is incredible. And do you think that that interaction and that connection with the guests is really what makes the zoo so special? Definitely. You know, the zoo is a place where uh, um, wildlife and our community intersect. This is a place where you can come and have an educational experience and learn about, about wildlife, their uniqueness, their wonder, their amazement uh, from the experiences we have as well as the team that's here and, and really hopefully go home and think about how you can take action and participate with the zoo in taking action to conserve wildlife and wild places. Yeah, it's so important. I know you guys always have a lot of special events, especially through the spring and summer. What can you share with us? We do. We have um, a variety of events, you know, things that happen during the daytime at the zoo. And then, you know, in the last couple of years, people um, had a chance to experience the zoo at night with some things we did. And this year is no different. We're bringing in something totally new. Um, it's the Grand Rapids Lantern Festival. And behind me is an example of one of the sculptures that will be in the zoo. There are 54 different lanterns that will be set up throughout the zoo. And that will be starting April 19th in the evenings through June 11th. Um, every evening that'll happen and it'll be a throughout the zoo experience. Um, it really will be amazing. This is the, the Lantern Festival is actually the first and only place that you can see these works of art in Michigan. And um, it's going to be a breathtaking experience for all ages. So behind you, that is a, that is a lantern? It is. So think of the, the you know, um, Asian lanterns that you would see. Normally people think of them as a small scale, yeah. something you would let up in the sky, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about life-size animals and cultural interpretation that you might walk through. You might see full size behind you. You'll literally have plants that are, are above your head. Um, and it's really amazing at night. There will also be entertainment um, and other aspects to learn about culture, community, and also wildlife in a really fun way. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Oh my gosh, so many interesting things. And again, it opens up this Friday. Andy, we're so glad you were able to join us today. Well, thank you for having me. We look forward to seeing you at the zoo this spring. Yeah, for sure. Thanks.